I'm Maya the Science Kid. And today I'm going to show you my top five favorite nonfiction books. So I've done this with fiction books too, and you should go check out my fiction book review. Um, Lala's Magic Pencil is a book by Malala, and it's illustrated by K-R-A-S-O-K-E with two dots above it, T, and Malala and is the winner of the Nobel Peace Prize, Peace Prize, and she is, um, the, I think the youngest person ever to get it. It's about Malala and how she has to stand up for herself and also has to stand up for the children in her valley that need to go to school because um, there were these people who didn't want women to go to school, but women were perfectly fine with going to school. Like, I'm a woman. If I didn't go to school, I wouldn't be able to read this book. I wouldn't be able to do this videos. I wouldn't be able to do science. I wouldn't be able to do my podcasts or my videos. And my other friends could wouldn't be a thing. So I'm really glad that I get to go to school. But here, Malala had to skip a little bit of school. And then she went straight back to school, of course. But she had to skip school a little bit. She had to skip a lot of school. And this is how she's wishing for a magic pencil that could erase stuff and draw new stuff. And all that stuff would come true. And it's like, oh, well, I would first erase, like, hunger, and then make girls and boys equals, and then stuff like that. And it's about, like, here's the page. So, people came so dangerous and her the voice her voice became so powerful that the dangerous men tried to silence her. and she kept trying and trying and trying and trying and they that she's and now right now she is currently alive and she is in college and i really like malala this book is called Six Dots. Louis Brill is currently not alive. He was alive 100, maybe 200 years ago. And he invented Braille. And it is named after his last name, Louis Braille. And Louis Braille is French, I think. Yes, he is French. And it literally has a pronunciation guide, so that's really helpful. And his actual name is not Louis Braille. It's Louis Braille. And Papa, it's not Papa, it's Pa, 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 that. And just a ton of stuff in here. And um, it fits all of his life. So he's a little kid and he blinds himself. That's okay. It's only in one eye, the infection spreads, and then he doesn't see anything. So he trains his ears to do what his eyes cannot. And he's like, he's like, oh, well, I hear this. That's the sound of my father working in his leather shop. I hear this swish, swish, swish. That's the sound of ladies with skirts walking down the street. I hear this, bark, bark, bark. That's the neighbor's dog chained too tight. And so he's training his ears to do his eyes could not. And he's always asking, is there any books for the blind? Is there any schools for the blind? And he really wants to know. And one day, he gets a letter. And the letter says, you are invited to one of the only schools for blind children. And he's like, I love you all. I love my brothers and sisters and my parents, and, and I love them. But I really need to go and get this privilege that I have. And so he goes. It's not very a nice place, but he learns how to, like, read. So imagine these words are 
They, these words are bumps, actually. So he runs his finger across it slowly, and you can only fit like two sentences on a page. Mm -hmm. Not very happy about that. Then this person gets um, the teacher says, "Well, hello, class. Um, this army person has figured out a way to talk to us in the army, and that's just as." And it's so nobody else can read it. And it's just a series of bumpy dots. And it was so complicated. And Louise, Louis Braille is like, oh. And he gets the sharp tool and the frame for making the words. And he and he's blind. So he just like does this and then he flips it the paper and tries it. He's like, nope, it's too complicated. Does this and he tries to write the alphabet again in a different way. He's like, too complicated. He tries a million times. And he's always sick and his back is hurting and he really wants to sleep. But he really needs to do this. And he dies at age 40, 40 something, 43 I think. And well, he invented Braille. He is a very famous person, and if you are blind, you are going to thank this person because otherwise you wouldn't be able to read any books. So, this book is called Wisdom from a Humble Jellyfish. This book is really good, and I have interviewed the author. It is in my Maya the Science Kid website at mayathesciencekid.com, and. If you go to book reviews, you can find it. And it's called Wisdom from a Humble Jellyfish. I have interviewed the author. This book is signed. And it's about, it's some, I really like this because it's like an animal book, except a self-care book, except a non-fiction book, except an animal book, except a, so many types of books. And it's just a really good book. Oh, I just opened to a random page. But here's what it said on it. Like, I just literally look. It says, if you've never failed, you've never tried anything new. And that is true. Tell me one time you failed. Was it some time that you were trying something new? Have you never failed? Have you ever tried anything new? Okay, well, then, like... Yeah, if you've never failed, the answer is no. If you've tried anything new, the answer is yes. So, ta-da! Quotation is right. By Albert Einstein. And, um, Wisdom from Humble Jellyfish. And Other Self-Care Virtuals from Nature by Ronnie Shaw. Well, it's about a little bit about some animals. And each chapter is about an animal. And that animal, like, specifically... One of them is, oh, and plants, like an avocado tree. And one of the animals is a porcupine. Also, it's like, we, what can we learn from these animals? Like a tiny shrimp, a shrimp. We eat shrimp. What can we learn from the shrimp? Oh, we can learn that we need energy. Actually, no. You can learn that you're little, but fierce. Anyways, um... Yeah, right here. Literally, I just flipped to the shrimp chapter. It says, take it from the fierce shrimp. Your pot's potential influence has nothing to do with size and everything to do with intertention. Um, in tension. With intention. So, it's just like, um, I don't know, Martin Luther King. He's like, I want people, I want my children to be treated by not the color, by not what they look like, but by the content of their heart. I want people to be by not what they, what shape they are, but their intentions, like that. It's really cool. What's like, also, just saying. It says, Maya, I hope you have a wonderful birthday. Stay sharp, like the porcupine. 
um, like the porcupine is in, um, um, parentheses. And then it says, from Ronnie Shaw. And she wrote it in May 2020. And it's actually still May 2020. It's May 24th, 2020. And that's Wisdom from a Humble Jellyfish. And then, this book is called The Coming RPG. And it goes through her life. And you're like, if you're doing the research on RPG, I don't know, you're, um, this occurs to all ages. If you're in college, you're doing a research project in science class or history class for RPG, read this book. Because this has a lot of cool information. You're like, well, all I knew before this was like, oh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg's mother died before Ruth Bader Ginsburg um, got, on the day Ruth Bader Ginsburg graduated from college and then she became the Supreme Court of Justice. But no, this has, oh, well, um, she became a Supreme Court Justice and then um, she met Marty and he's really funny and then um and then guess what and then she goes to law school with Marty and then um um and I don't know and then yeah really cool just like um oh and then marty had cancer and then a ton of stuff detailed happened and then she um blah 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 happened and blah 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 blah, blah and then she became a supreme court justice and blah blah blah, blah and then it's really exciting and it has it's impacted it's this book you know compared to my head this is how skinny it looks also it's a comic book with way more words than you'd expect. There's more words than pictures. So, yes. Like, literally, there are more words than pictures. There are more word bubbles than pictures. There's just so many information. I recommend reading this book. Just a, such a good book. This is RBG, I mean Becoming RBG, but by, by, by who's it by? It's by Double Levy, illustrated by Wenty and G Gardener. And then, we, okay, this is the last book, but it's a good book. And it's called A Child Through Time. And it's literally about a child through time. So, you're doing a book report about somebody who lives in the last ice age. And, well, you're like, oh, well, I don't really know about that. You read this book. Because it has, a, like, oh, I want to know about um, somebody in Korea. I don't know, 100 years ago. Like that. Well then open this book, find somebody, and there's a person from Korea a hundred years ago. So, yeah. It's like, well it's a very short book, but and the first page is about, it's the first page is about a girl from last size age, and then it goes a little older, a little, all the way to 50 year old Ruby Bridges. And, Maybe bridges like there are many things that are different about 50 years ago and now but anyways this book good book about a child it's a very good child hmm I like this book also it also says the book of children's history and that's what it is so Oh, this girl. Her name's Electro. She's actually um, this is um 
and she's a Maya girl living in a farming country. <laughs> and she weaves and ton and then it also has like oh well I want to know some some of the materials they use well and I want to know what their village looks like well I want to have a dia uh, a labeled diagram well this is a labeled diagram about her what her village maybe looked like and we have and oh look this is a Maya calendar. And it's a different type of calendar. So it's a Maya calendar. This and this ribbon is long. See, it says it's not ended. And there are symbols, and you learn what all symbols mean. And then this is the calendar. And she weaved a lot. And that's a lot of like you can find a lot of information. And oh, oh uh, well, Ruby Bridges. And, oh, well, we don't have that much stuff, but, oh, want to know a little more about segregation? Read this. Read this caption. Oh, want to know a little bit more about New Orleans and New Orleans in the South? Read this picture. Oh, want to know, like, civil rights movement, Ruby Bridges, like, her little life. Her, um, like, a little story about her life. And then, um, people holding up signs, and then, like, and then this is a big picture of her. All right, go page long. And it is Ruby Bridges going to school, or going back from school, or going back from school, yes. And that's her. You can see her determined face, and now she's, like, 50 years old. But anyways... She has a determined face on, and she's going to walk back from school, and stuff like that. It's really um, the book. Also, it don't wanna wanna read the back before. Good idea. Look at this. These are a little bit of the pictures from their city. So, oh, um, this is. So, this is about the Maya girl. And this is about um, Spanish City during Black, um, Black Death. And this is about a 17th century pirate ship in whatever that place is. And this is about serpents. Who train to be warriors. That picture. And then, oh, it's also, there are book. This book has some stuff in it. That's like, oh. It's not just a timeline of books. Uh oh, I dropped my books. And that's basically all the books about. See you next time on the Maya the Science Kid video. Because this is the end of the video. Do, do, do. Do da do, do da do, do da do.